The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the February 4th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past, well, it's really just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you are listening live, we appreciate that very much. If you're listening at 1 o'clock, we appreciate that as well. I can guarantee you we're going to make today's show as pertinent as we can uh, for the uh, 1 p.m. Uh, time frame. Uh, so, uh, but if you aren't listening live, we would love to hear from you. A couple different ways to do that. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you're listening live, but you don't want to call or you can't call, you can always send me an email. Send it early to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. So as we begin the day at 808 in the morning, we've got a mixed bag out here. You've got the Dow off 109 points, the equity future contract, that is. The Russell 2000 is off nine. The Nasdaq's up one thirteen eight tenths of a percent. The S&P 500 up four and a half points, one tenth of a percent to the upside. Spot volatilities still uh, well above its 50-day exponential moving average. It's always dangerous from a rug, as a rug pull perspective for the S&P 500. Over in Asia last night, you had the uh, uh, Shanghai was closed. The uh, Nikkei was up 198.7 tenths. The Hang Seng a little over 3%, 771 points. Over in Asia, they were up 42 points, 6 tenths of a percent. And a mixed bag in Europe. The DAX is off 218, maybe targeting its uh, lows from, I believe, that was January 24th. And the FTSE, um, it's still, even though it's up six points, I know it's trading below its oscillator and change line, and that may lead to lower price as well. Gold is up 10 bucks now, trading out at 1814. Silver's up 22 bucks. Platinum is off 11. Palladium's up uh, 20 bucks. The 30 year treasure up 10 ticks. She's trading at 155.07. Commodities, uh, biggest mover out here looks like uh, lumber, up about uh, 5%. And uh, the U.S. dollar index is uh, back at 95.27. I believe it's targeting 95.10. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at that during the day. But what's, let's go to the most important charts out here. So we're going to switch panels. If you give me a moment here, we're going to go take a look at the daily time frame charts for the equity future contracts. So here in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see the ES Mini. Upper right-hand corner, you've got the NQ. Lower left, you've got the Dow. Lower right, you got the Russell 2000. What each of these are doing, at least the first three, the ES, the NQ, and the YM, Dow Equity Future Contract, they are testing their red oscillator and change line. Now, the uh, Russell is trading just below. But what the Russell's doing, it's actually testing its swing point. This is the swing point down here, which was the 28th. And so far, it has tested and rejected that level. So as of 8.10 in the morning, and what will it be at 1.10? So you'll want to be taking a look at this. The question is, is the ES Mini trading above 44.74? Is the uh, NQ trading above what looks like about 14.610? Is the uh, Dow trading above 34.870? And is the uh, Russell trading above, well, ideally what you'd want to see here is this to trade above 19.86? If the answer is yes, then there is the possibility that uh, yesterday and today's movement, yesterday for the NQ, today's movement for the ES, the Dow, and the Russell 2000, that they are setting up the C point 
of an A to B equals C to the upside. Now, we can't call that just yet, but that's what it looks like. Now, I would have more conviction in that statement if these oscillator and change lines were green versus red. When they're red, it just suggests, okay, a further bounce higher, not a confirmed uh, momentum move to the upside. But nonetheless, we are in the favorable seasonal cycle. And the reason why I believe more so that we could see the C point of an A to B equals C to the upside begin is because of the NQ. So the NQ here, I'm just going to expand out the screen. We may look at it a couple of different ways out here. But in the case of the NQ, we know it's got that nice confirmed bottom. It had that uh, by the D point that was confirmed with the hammer candle on January 24th. Goes ahead and makes a, a B line heading for its breakdown level of 15,653. Stalls out a couple of days ago, but price was above the top of its daily profile, two consecutive sessions here. And what that then tells me, not that, what that then tells me, is that first, this is a bear structured profile. When price closes above a bear structured profile, a counter trend move will find support at the center of that profile. That folks, that level is 14. 484. And that is exactly what took place yesterday. Now, what you'll notice today inside the NQ, and this is where it's not giving us a clear signal, it has neither taken out yesterday's low or yesterday's high. So to a certain extent, we have sort of sort of an inside bar. It's not really an inside bar. But uh, we don't have – so the only thing that we can go with is just simply the mere fact that price pulled back to where it should have, found support at the center of that bear structured profile. And this suggests that that could be, could be the C point of an A to B equals C to the upside. So how are we gonna figure that out if it is or it isn't? Great question. So we're gonna go from the daily time frame chart. So you can have this picture here and we're gonna move over into the short term charts, the 30 minute charts. And the reason, and this is really cool about today and why it's cool about uh, doing a show at A12 or 112 in the afternoon, because the, the numbers that I give you are going to provide you with the answers to these questions or should be able to provide us with the answers to these questions. So now we've got the 30 minute time frame charts. Each of them formed TD nine count bottoms. They did that. I came in at 730 this morning. It was the bar following bar number one. And then what we saw here was an immediate rally. Now that immediate rally took us up to where those oscillator and change lines. See these oscillator and change lines, they work the same way for every time frame. Uh, and they give us different messages for those uh, for those time frames, depending on what those messages are. Now, in this case here for the 30 minute charts, each of those are red oscillator and change lines. So testing and rejecting those and being below that is a bearish thing or potentially bearish thing. Or what it could mean is price might go back and just simply test support. Could be the TD9 count support. It could be a new profile level of support. For example, in the case of the NQ, that new level of support would be 14,540. In the case of the ES Mini, that support is 4460. In the Dow, it's 34,795. In the Russell 2000, 1970. Those would be the bottom of their current 30 minute profiles. If price is able to take out those oscillator and change lines, close above them, then what that signals is a move up to their TD9 count breakdown levels. And that, in the case of the ES Mini, that's 45.28. So we know it's not trading there now at 8.14, but where is it trading at 1.14 in the afternoon? If price is above 45.28, uh, this afternoon, if you're listening at 114, that's a pretty good indication that the A to B equals CD pattern that we're looking at, potentially looking at, has begun. In the case of the NQ, the number to look at is 14825. The Dow is going to be 35206 and the Russell 2006. This is a wonderful thing because all of this is applying to 114 in the afternoon and 814 in the morning. Of course, you're listening live. We'd love to hear from you, 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. 
For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We are recording this live between 8 and 9 in the morning, and thanks so much for listening in whichever time frame you do. And let's continue with the uh, thought process that we were looking at in the equity future contract. So what I gave you in the ES Mini was a price target to the upside, a price target of 45.28. If price close above that, that says, okay, this A to B equals C to the upside may be underway. The real level that it needs to close above would be yesterday's high to give us that signal. Yesterday's high, so both of these are, are key levels. Yesterday's high is 45.48. So if you see a close above that, now it's not a guarantee that we've got an A to B equals CD to upside because price will still have not taken out the B point, which was the uh, trading session from three days ago. That high, by the way, is 45.86, and the ES Mini would still have resistance at 46.25. But that would be a very potential likely outcome. In the case of the NQ, it's just traded with inside yesterday's bar. So close above yesterday's high, yesterday's high was 14.870. The top of its profile is 14.874. So it's really price would need to close above 18, 14,874 to suggest that A to B equals CD to the upside. In the case of the Dow, I gave you the number for the Dow is 35,286. But really the number is going to be 35,569. That is yesterday's high that price would need to clear out there. And in the case of the Russell 2000, the level that I gave you was 2006. Again, these were the TD9 breakdown levels for the 30-minute time frame charts. The real level that price would need to close above is 2025 out there. So those are your parameters, whether it's 819 in the morning or whether it's 119 in the afternoon or 4 o'clock. So that's the potential to the upside. What about the potential to the downside? For, by the way, I think it's the NQ that we really want to focus in on because that can lift all, all, to all boats out there. The A to B equals CD pattern out here would look something like this. Uh, that I'm typing in on my screen out here that would take us up to about 16. Let's in fact, let me just expand out the screen for us. Would take us up into the 16.010 level. Now, if we take a look at the retracements, so we're going to take a look at a retracement from high to low. That high to low, the high is out here from the trading day of November 22nd, the low January 24th. What we'll see is that about the 0.786 retracement area, 16.113, is very close to that 
A to B equals C D pattern to the upside. That would be the ideal place to be able to then sell into this marketplace. If Larry Pesavento were listening right now, I don't think that he is, but he's pretty early out there. He would tell you that H.M. Gartley would say in a bear market, which we very well may be in out here, you sell that first Gartley pattern. And that would be the gift to each of us out here. Now, no guarantee that that's going to happen. Why is that? Well, because what we could actually be seeing here is we could actually be seeing an A to B equals CD to the downside that is in play out here. Wait a minute, Steve. Well, you just got me all in the frame of uh, bullishness out here. No, but the bullishness is the patterns that are in play because of how the NQ responded yesterday. But we still cannot factor out that there still could be an A to B equals CD to the downside that is in play out here. I don't think that's the pattern right now, but uh, you cannot, uh, you cannot, uh, you, you can't say that it isn't or that it can't be. So if we do see an A to B equals CD to downside, that's going to require us to take out 13706. Then what we'd be looking at is a move down to, at a minimum, I would say, uh, 12306 out there. So I don't think that's a pattern that is in play, but but it's, I see it. It's got potential. Price has to close below. It. Now, why is that now? So where are we going to get a, a determination, whether it's an A to B equals C to the upside or to the downside? Well, it's some of those price levels that I gave to you, that's one area. I did mention that the Russell 2000 is probably an area for us to watch because it's been a weak link out here. It's had a very tepid rally, and what it is doing is the Russell 2000 is the first one, maybe the only one at this stage of the game, that's made its way back to its swing point low. Now, the other equity future contracts had their swing low on January 24th. That is not the case for the Russell 2000. It is January 28th. The high of that swing is 1966. So far this morning, price has gotten down to a low of 1966. So it's tested that level. It's tested it. And it's rejected it. Now, if price closed below 1966.50, so at 1, 8, 122 in the afternoon, price is, is trading below 1966.50, then that's an indication that price should go make a run for the lows. Now, the lows being here, January 28th low of 1892.40. But if price is holding, but hold this and get back above the top of, or the bottom of its daily profile, so get back inside its profile, that would be at 1982. Then uh, we've got something to think about. That could be indicating an A to B equals CD to the upside out here. So that's how I would take a look at it. Again, we go back. We take a look at the daily time frame charts. I'm not doing that right now. But the daily time frame charts showing that price is testing that red oscillator and change line. That can be an area of support. And, and the reason why I've harped on it so much is because of how the NQ or what the NQ actually did yesterday, which was pulled back into that uh, center of its bearish structured profile out there, and uh, that uh, gave us the uh, that gave us the indication that this could be just a counter trend move to the downside. And the other thing that adds to that element here, it's it's very subtle but very important, and that is that the lows of yesterday in the NQ have not been taken out where they have inside the other instruments. So that's what we want to watch uh, for the uh, day, and I certainly hope that that helps each of you out. Um, yeah, I know I, when I put that T in there, T and crumpets, T E E, I realized I had spelled it wrong, and obviously my mind was thinking about golf, but yeah, that is not on today's agenda. Tomorrow's agenda, absolutely, but not on today's agenda. Okay, so where do we want to go to uh, next out here? The next thing, you know, I, what I like to do is, uh, especially during this time frame, is go take a look at what's going on internationally. So what's going on internationally? Let's go switch over to those charts, if you give me a moment, just a few of these international charts, uh, because uh, it's, it's very important to understand that, or at least I believe that it is. And so the Shanghai has been closed, so we can't take a look at the uh, Shanghai, but I can share with you, I'll just expand out the Shanghai chart, um, pull this back just a tad. Uh, so, so where it closed out here, we can see that it's trading to its swing point from July the 28th. So odds favor that that area could or should get tested that low. That gets taken out. That would spell trouble. Now, that is basically, you can see this very large consolidation. You want to talk about a consolidation pattern? Let's talk about a consolidation pattern. If we take a look at the uh, Shanghai out here, where is the uh, rectangle? There we go. The highs are, are, are about as clear as Isabel out here. So we'll just uh, come in about uh, this level here. And the lows are very clear as well out here. So you can see that this is just trading inside a very, very large consolidation. And you know, if you can't bust them to the downside, you try to bust them to the upside. Of course, first uh, target would be its oscillator and change line. Um, now, if this consolidation gets broken to either direction, it gives you a measured move equal to or greater than this consolidation, which runs from about uh, 30. 
four seventy five to thirty nine hundred out there. I mean, that's a big that is a big uh, move inside. But that's the pattern inside of the Shanghai. The pattern inside of the Hang Seng is the possibility of an A to B equals CDT upside. So this forms a nice road momentum into cut bottom back here. Gets up to wave number four, letter D on my screen. Pulls back. I don't know why it found support where it did. It doesn't matter. What we know is that yesterday's action took price back above its green oscillator and change line. Remember, we're looking at the daily time frame charts for the ES and NQ. There is red. Well, in the case of the Hang Seng, this is a green oscillator and change line. Odds favor that the low from three days ago, or yesterday, I should say, was the C point of an A to B equals C to the upside. At a minimum, the Shanghai should go target 2541. I'm sorry, uh, 20, yeah, 25414. The Nikkei. Also, may be in an A to B equals CD to the upside. It's got the nice TD9 count bottom. Price pulls back, tests, and rejects that red oscillator and change light at a minimum. The DK should go target 28,690. The DAX here is trading into its January 24th swing point. So, as long as it stays within side there, it may want to go test the bottom. And the FTSE trading just below its oscillator and change line. Uh, that may want lower price. You can see the US dollar index just wants to target 95.10. The euro wants to make its next move up to the 116. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, you know, I was born on September 9th, 9-9, 
And uh, so nine has always been uh, one of my uh, uh, favorite numbers, obviously. And it's perhaps the reason why I have fallen so much in love with the TD nine count pattern. And folks, you want to learn this pattern. I mean, you here. I've just turned to the currency chart since we were discussing uh, currencies here, just in the natural flow of the uh, show out here. And if we take a look at the euro, start with the euro, the very bottom, formed with a TD nine count bottom. Now, what price did yesterday was it closed above its breakdown level at 114. What price needs to do, if price closes above its most recent swing point high in the 1.148 level, then that's going to suggest to move up to the next breakdown area at 116. All brought to you by those TD9 counts out here. If we take a look at the Great British Pound, formed a TD9 count top, formed a TD9 count bottom. As long as price remains above that oscillator and change line, price should make a move up to the 136 level. Um, the uh, Canadian dollar is just testing its oscillator and change line, very much like our U.S. equity futures. As long as price remains above that, it may go, go target the 128 level. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, uh, Swedish uh, uh, Swiss Corona out here, tops with a TD9 count, then generates a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. Odds favor that this is going to pull back to the 9.003 level. That's its breakout area. And the U.S. dollar index forms a TD9 count top. And price is pulling back to the 95.10 area. This is where price should hold. If it doesn't hold, then in the case of the U.S. dollar, much like the euro, price should then go target its next breakout area. And for the U.S. dollar index, that would be $93.81. So the natural progression would be to go from, because we're looking at all these currencies, is the, the move here in these currencies, how is it impacting gold? Not just impacting gold, but I mean, how is it impacting the price of gold in these currencies out here? Well, good question. So let's go uh, take a look at that. We're going to have to change screens here. So give me just a moment to pull off that magic trick. And voila, what we have is Goldilocks priced in each of those currencies. So in the case of gold, uh, well, it just took a little hit to the uh, downside in terms of U.S. dollars. From a bullish standpoint, <clears throat> uh, what do they come out with the job numbers at 830? Okay. So that certainly has uh, tanked gold just a tad. But the point is still the point that I want to make. In order for gold to get rolling either to the upside or to the downside, it needs to be moving in that same direction, pricing all of these currencies out here. So you can see that gold right now in terms of dollars, just below yesterday's uh, close, below gold priced in euros, below yesterday's close. Uh, in yen, just trading inside of yesterday. And in Great British Pounds, uh, it, price is moving higher out here. So what we have is a mixed bag right now of signals with regard to gold in either direction. So don't expect gold to get too wild out here. I mean, look, it can do whatever it's going to do. But right now, with regard to signals, what we don't have is a uniform signal of the direction that gold wants to move in. Now, because gold did have some type of reaction here, let's go take a look at some additional gold charts. So let's look at uh, this. Well, uh, no, do you want to look at that? No, we're going to go take a look at this chart here because this gives us our our quad series so what we've got is if you take a look at what gold has really been doing over the course of the last uh, two months uh or i should say since uh, november 29th it's just been consolidating with inside its weekly profile in fact quite frankly we can go back further and see really just a large sideways consolidation out here um you know that could easily take us back into the uh, june time frame but right now the key levels of resistance are 1830.80. The key level of support is 1763.70. Uh, you can see some nice rising trend lines on the daily time frame as price holds that. If it continues to hold that, then no damage done otherwise. To the upside resistance, as I said, 1830. If price got above 1830, it would then have some resistance at about the 1850 level, which is a little descending trend line. So that's what's going on with gold as we speak. Uh, we can take one more look at Goldilocks. There's a number of gold traders inside our Tiger's Den and those that are listening in. So to do that, what we want to see is what's going on on the intraday time periods out here. So we've got to do one of those uh, uh, one of those moves to a different screen of Stevie's. And this is our – what the heck happened there? My daily chart is uh, kind of vanished, uh, but we're seeing the large move here. So right now – there we go. So right now, with regard to Goldilocks, uh, you can see the TD9 count top that formed out here. That identified the top. That was on a 30-minute basis. That was at uh, what time? That was at 6 o'clock this morning. And now we've got a big Rosemontum indicator signal. So with price below 1806, where is its next target out here? Just looking for some support. So the only support that I see at the moment is at 1799. 
That is on the 120 minute time frame. That is its profile. So you got 1798 on the 240, and price on the 300 minute chart is uh, testing its oscillator and change line. So we're pretty much near an area of support that should hold 1799-ish. If it doesn't hold, what does that mean? What that would mean is that we would likely see a move back to about the 1785 level. But right now, as we speak, not on the real short-term time frame charts, being the 30-minute or the 60-minute, we're going to the 120, the 240, and the five-hour time frame chart to gauge where price may find support. So that's what's going on with Goldilocks as we speak. Now, because the jobs numbers are out, let me uh, change screens again, and let's go get a feel for what's going on just simply overall with regard to instruments out there. And for that, we go to our nine-panel market update uh, chart out here. So this is going to give us a little bit of a feel. So the NQ still has not taken out yesterday's low. Very interesting. Whereas in the case of the ES, you can clearly see that that has. And look, the ES may continue to head lower uh, because that spot volatility is still well above its 50-day expense moving average. It's 50 days at 22.42. Price right now for the VIX at 25.93. The U.S. dollar index here, you can just see that it's trading below the bottom of its profile. I don't have the TD9 counts on my black background screens, but you know where price is likely headed to there. Gold, we've already talked about. Silver is trading back into the support area. The support zone for silver is between 21.82 and 22.23. That is its bullish structured weekly profile. In the case of light sweet crude here, so that's one to take a look at, trade out at 92.13. Now, I'll go switch to our quad panel charts here momentarily. Uh, natural gas, uh, big sell the D point yesterday, so price should pull back to its oscillator and change zone. We'll have to go take a look at that level. In the case of the 30-year treasury, just consolidating with inside its daily profile. Right now, in essence, testing the support area, which is at 153.18. You're trading at 153.28. So first, let's go to light sweet crude, because light sweet crude is trading above all profiles. When I say all profiles, what I'm really referring to is daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly. And that's this set of charts right here. So you can see on the upper left-hand uh, panel, price is trading above the top of its daily, well above the top of its weekly, uh, taken out the top of its monthly, taken out a prior swing point from back in 2018 out there. And as we take a look at the quarterly time frame chart, if we just simply go from the high, this is like a continuous contract. Uh, if we go from the high out here down to the low, what we can see is price is above the 0 0.382 retrace. But now it's a quarterly chart. It's only January. The quarter doesn't end until March. But right now, this signal is over time that where lights we crew wants to head to would be the 0.618 retracement of that entire move and that would take us up into the 140 level let's go take a look at my other charts because there's one other element here that i want you to make aware of because everything looks uber bullish when it comes to lights we crude but we cannot ignore the patterns and the pattern i'm referring to is going to be the daily time frame pattern so here you've got your eight panel charts for lights we crude. And what you'll notice on the daily time frame is you'll notice that today is going to become bar number eight. Today is also wave number seven. That's letter G. Remember, that can extend itself. It needs a lower high in order to confirm that seventh wave inning stretch move out here. But this does say that we should see, not that we will, but that we should see a short term top form in crude oil between today and Monday. Now, that top would likely only take price back to its oscillator and change line, which currently is printed at 89.30. Steve Rose with TFN. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. A prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we've got uh, first question coming in from Hector and Patty. They are fuel injectors and happy, fantastic Fosters Friday back at you. And Hector and Patty would like to take a look at the Citicorp out here. So we take a look at the Citicorp charts. What do we know? Well, really, the weekly chart out here, Hector and Patty, they tell the entire story. Price is just simply trading. It's got a wedgie going on. You know, those wedgies are not very fun. And uh, right now, that's what it's trading within. So it's got resistance at a descending trend line. It's got support at a rising trend line. It's trading, in essence, within its daily profile. Not exactly. Uh, the bottom of the profile has got support at 58.80 and 60.01. And resistance is trading above, which is 64.84. But we know that price has a resistance at the descending trend line. If price is able to take out the descending trend line, that would get us to a price point of about 68.93. Uh, and we can see that uh, that on the daily chart out here, price is trading with inside a bear structure daily profile. So it's got to clear 67.48. Two consecutive closes above that would then suggest, well, first to run back to its recent high in the daily time frame. That's the high from January 12th. That high is 68.65. What else can we gleam out of these charts here? Really, Hector and Patty, I really believe that it is the weekly chart right now that is the one to focus on. But let's pull over the white background charts, see if there's any additional information that can assist us. Well, we know that yesterday was nothing more than a test of that green oscillator and change line. So support is held, but boy, you've got that big resistance barrier. So this formed a TD9 count top, pulled back to test its breakout level of support. Then moves up into a resistance uh, zone out here. And so it's really going to be that resistance zone of 66.89 and 67.48. But really, in order to get its bullishness, price would have to take out this TD9 count top. Bar number eight, January 12th high. That level out here, Hector, is going to be 68.65. So... What I'm not sure is, well, that's that's what I see when I take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart. On a weekly basis, you can see significant resistance has formed a TD9 count bottom. And so price should target the TD9 count breakdown area. That's at $71.85. The monthly chart has what? 
The monthly chart's not providing us with a ton of information. So if I go back with regard to Citicorp right now. What's really controlling it are the rising and descending trend lines that are formed on the um, a weekly time frame chart out there. And so, Hector and Patty, thanks so much for writing in. You have a fantastic weekend as well, and we'll look forward to speaking to you again on uh, next week, perhaps on uh, Monday. So good morning, Steve. This comes in from Brent. I went long gold yesterday uh, with that morning plunge at 1790. There's been a fairly large move down. Yep, yep, yep. Just, uh, what levels will be watching for gold? So we sort of covered that, I believe, Brent. But just uh, just for the heck of it, we'll go back to those gold charts here momentarily. Let me get that page up, and then we'll change screens out here. So we'll go see what uh, gold is doing at this very moment. <laughs> there we go. Again, I got that problem. Oh, there we go. The daily's been populated. So... Right now, Brent, uh, price is testing a uh, key level of support. That's at 1798-ish area. We're trading at 1797, 40, and 50. And if price does not hold this level, then you should expect and anticipate a move down to the 1785 area. So basically back to where you bought in at 1790. So, so far that's held, but there's support here that's important. And if this uh, level fails, then we may see another uh, flush down to that 1785.80, which is the TD9 count breakout level for the five-hour time frame chart. I would say if price closes below that, 1785 that is, well, we know that it will go target the low from January 28th, and that low out there would be 1780. So the real key level of support out here to be watching Brent and everybody else is low from January 28, 178060. If price were to close below that level, that would then open up the door for a run to the 175540 area. Now, look, you've still got higher highs and higher lows that are in place as we speak. When we take a look at the daily time frame chart out there. So your question was, are there any support levels to watch? And the answer is yes. It's at 1798-ish area. And if this holds, then uh, support will have held. So, Brent, thanks so much for getting up so early and writing in. And uh, have a, a fantastic weekend. So that's all the questions that have come in by email. I don't believe there's anything else inside the Tiger's Den. But, folks, if you are listening to the Tiger's Den and you do have something that you'd like me to go take a look at, please go ahead and uh, punch that in. So it was Amazon, right? Amazon was out with the uh, numbers yesterday. Let's go see where Amazon is trading here in the pre-market AMZN and then let's actually uh, let me change screens here before uh, Mr. Bill strikes me with a, a two by four and uh, so we've got Amazon in the pre-market trading at 3090 so we know where it's trading let's go take a look at uh, this panel chart out here let's get that up ZN 3090 is where it's trading and we're just trying to understand where's the resistance level so what did I say 3090 out here and uh 3090 would actually get it back inside of its uh, monthly profile out there. So that would be quite a, a move. 3090 would take it above. So the actual high out here from February the 2nd, please show the 8 bill. Okay, we'll do. Uh, so the high of uh, February 2nd is uh, 3101. Where did I say it's trading at? 3101. 30, 3089. So that's it's just going to trade right back right now. It's just trading right back up into the air where it gave up. Um, it's moved now. I don't know why it did at that stage. Let me see if I can grab uh, my radio charts out here and pull that over. Now, it's going to take a moment to populate once I actually get to that panel uh, because of all the windows that I Oh, I know how I can do it a little bit simpler. Just daily, weekly, and monthly for Amazon AMZN. Cut out those short-term time frames. It should uh, populate this a little bit better. So I'm just trying to understand where's the key level of resistance that uh, price is headed to. So at 39, so the real key level of resistance here is going to be at 31.9469. Uh, so that's the level that price would need to close above. So what Amazon has, it has a confirmed road momentum indicator bottom. It uh, confirmed that pattern on January the uh, 28th. Then we had a nice little gap to the upside, a second confirmation, price closing above the top of its uh, profile level. Uh, but then yesterday, you know, moving all the way back down to support the bottom of that daily profile. So the real key level here, we might just have a consolidation inside of Amazon, which is uh, depending on where this closes today. That Amazon, And if it, close, if it doesn't take out the most recent high, then you can kind of see the consolidation because price is already trading up into this area. And then this, in a, sense, in a sense, would be its consolidation pattern. If price can take out that high from a couple of days ago, then 3194 is the real key level. And if price can close above 3194, then what you've got in Amazon on a daily basis is a change in trend signal out there. So that's what I see on the daily time frame, the weekly time frame. Uh, the weekly time frame shows a TD9 count bottom. 
an oscillator and change line that has changed colors, and so price should naturally move up to about that 3194 level. That is the old, that's the bottom of the old consolidation pattern that it broke through. So this is playing out like it should. The uh, charts, uh, the weekly chart ahead of time, when that changes color, the oscillator and change line that is, that tells you about an eventual price hookup. You typically get that price hookup once you get a confirmed bottom. And that was the TD9 count bottom that formed a couple of uh, two weeks, uh, last week, not this week out there. So that's what you've got going on inside of uh, Amazon. We've got a request to go take a look at Dr. Copper. So we'll do that. And uh, while I get the eight panel charts going, first let's just go take a look at the larger multi time frames for the doctor. And uh, if you give me a moment, we'll actually get there. I see we're going to a break here. But what I'll leave up on the screens for you is this set of charts here. You've got your daily, your weekly, your monthly, and your quarterly charts for the doctor. And the doctor says, this looks like uh, Citicorp. I'm just trading between my rising and falling trend lines out here. Steve Rhodes with TFN. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks, and thanks so much for joining me at uh, 8 this morning. We did record the show between 8 and 9, being, re being replayed between 1 and 2. Monday, we'll be back to the normal 1 o'clock uh, slot out here. We've slid over to the 8 panel charts here for high-grade copper. And as far as any real clear signals here, 
Um, right now, uh, key levels of support, John, are being tested. I'll just start from the lower right, the five-hour chart out here. No real topping signal, but price dealing with the breakdown resistance level of 449. If price closes below the uh, green oscillator and change line at 446, then price should make its way back to the 441 to 443 level. Price is trading below the oscillator and change line for the four-hour chart. It's got a TD9 count top, so this suggests that price should go target 443 to 444. Price is sitting at support on the 120-minute time frame chart, so if you see a close below 445-ish, that tells us about a move lower. You are going to get bar number eight this hour, so in four more minutes, you're going to get bar number eight on a 60-minute chart. We do know that on a TD9 count bottom, the bottom can form on bars eight, nine, the bar following now, but you have to wait for bar nine to complete, so the earliest uh, uh, a uh, signal for that would come at uh, 10 a.m., not 9 a.m. The 30-minute chart out here, do we have any kind of a topping uh, signal? I don't believe that we do. There may be a sell the D point pattern in A to B equals C to the uh, ups, uh, upside, but price right now is taking on support at 446. The green oscillator change on a daily basis is uh, what is being tested right now. So um, you're really testing support, key levels of support. Uh, need to see how they end for their session, the five-hour session for the uh, uh, high-grade copper is going to uh, take place in four minutes at 9 a.m. out there. So I do hope that that helps you out. We've got one more request inside the Tiger's Den. Let me get to that real quickly here. Uh, let's change charts. Oh, get, oh, come on, Stevie, where are you? Here we go, radio charts. And it was to take a look at uh, Boeing. So let me do this here. I'm gonna just pull the Boeing chart over to the screen real quickly as I take a look at Boeing. On a daily basis, let's see what we have out here. On a daily basis for Boeing, we've got a TD9 count bottom. And if price can uh, close above the top of its daily profile out there, that level is 206.68. It should make a run 225.42. Folks, stay tuned. Tom Bill Bryan is up next, or David White, and on when you're listening. Have a great day, folks. Building wealth trading in the stock market.